I've got a passion for furniture repair, and I love to share these stories with you. This chair was brought to me by a customer. This was his grandfather's, and it's very loose, and he would like to get glued up so he can use it again. It also has a broken rocker, so that needs to be replaced. I'm going to show you step by step how I go through and restore this rocker so the customer can enjoy it for generations to come. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. Now I've taken a look over this chair and it's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure this is handmade. And I could strip and refinish this, but then it would look like a newer chair and that really destroys the character and the history of this chair. There are some wear marks from being used. Uh, there's some finish that has crackled over time and it's really got that feel of history. So I'm gonna be taking this apart, putting it back together again so it's solid and the owner can enjoy it but I really want to make sure that I don't change the finish where I don't have to. Here the wear marks are obvious. This is from elbows and hands on the chair. In here you can see some of the finish crackling and you can see that all the way up here and it's a little bit worn on the edge. This is all the character and history of this chair and that's what I'm not changing. I love the design here, very simple, and this beefy stretcher at the bottom is pretty cool as well. Now if I turn this around, it's very wide for a rocking chair um, and it's stout as well. So very unique, uh, a nice curve here, nice details under here, and the seat is hand carved. You can tell it's hand carved because back here you can see the tooling marks, here and over here. These aren't flaws, these are original tooling marks from the scorp that would have cleaned this out. These spindles that are in the back here are all unique as well. If you look down here, these are made by hand, all hand carved. So this isn't something that came out of a factory. The other neat feature is on the back. You can actually see the old finish. And it was probably caked on pretty thick. Look at the texture in this finish. All original, not worn down at all. That's got some real character to it. Look at the finish here and up here. Some people might look at this as flaws. I look at it as character and history. I'm going to label all the parts and what I do is just label them left right as if I'm sitting in the chair. Normally when I disassemble a chair I put it upside down and then label it that way. But in this case I'm going to do everything right side up because it's a rocking chair. So what I do is I just write my labels left right on a piece of tape before I put them on the chair. That way I don't run the risk of getting my Sharpie marker on the chair if I miss the tape. Now I can get out my Yankee screwdriver and start taking it apart. Now it's really important on old screws like this that you get a good seating in the slot and I can't seem to get in there. There's some old finish. So I'll just take, I've got a short end of a hacksaw blade and run it on the inside of that groove. And what that does is clears out any finish and debris that's in there. That's preventing me from getting a good purchase on it. So you can see there's already some stuff flaking off there. So I'll give that a try. There, that's much deeper. Wow, that's tight. The screw is staying in place, but it's pushing the arm out. So it's putting tension on the arm. I need to pop the arm off. Okay, there we go. Now look at the difference on the finish on the bottom versus the top. And this is really smooth. This has some texture to it. So the next part is to take the rockers off. So I'll put my padding down here. Now 
and these rockers were put on with screws here and here and that's why this broke um, by putting in screws here you're weakening the end grain of the rocker so this really should have been a mortise and tenon or a dowel joint not only did the rocker break here the screw also broke off so i've got a screw in here i'm gonna have to deal with The screw on the bottom of this rocker isn't coming off, so I'm going to heat up a screwdriver and the screwdriver is going to transfer the heat to the head of the screw to hopefully loosen that up. The only other solution for this is to drill up the screw and I really don't want to do that. So with that screw out, this is now loose. And just knock it apart. I don't know how old this chair is, but this joint is rock solid. It's not coming apart. So I'm just going to leave that intact and work around it. The next step is to take the seat off and I see there are some screws under the seat and I also see that there are screws through the side here. Um, I'm always nervous to take off caps like this because half the time they break. I see there's a bit of a scar there. I'm wondering if these might have been replaced on this side. Uh, no, there's some older finish there. So I'm just going to have to carefully work around this to see if I can free it up without damaging it. Now to do as least damage possible here, I'm using a new chisel. This is a crank neck chisel. So here's the handle. And what it does is it allows me to lay this flat, unlike other chisels. So lay it flat here. Hold it down, and we'll see how this goes. Oh, it's starting to move. Come at it from the other side. I think we got it. Now, as I lifted that out, there's a little sliver of wood right here that came off and it's just barely hanging on there. So I'm going to take that off right now and glue it in so I don't lose that. There, got it in place. It's challenging to get in there, but it's definitely worth saving the piece. Now it's important not to lose any small parts and even splinters off of a piece of furniture. So I put these into a container and that way I know where all the pieces are and I'm not gonna lose one in the dust or on my workbench. Now looking on the underside of this, this is a one inch slab of oak. There are three screws across here. And what I found is the center one's tight. The ones on the side here and here, they're really loose. And so what that is, is the wood movement moving back and forth. That's a really strong piece of wood. And it's actually taking these screws and it's loosening them up as the wood expands and contracts across that grain. I'll take the seat off here and we can take a look at the label. So the label says John C. Mundell. And up here it says no and then a line. So there's a number. But I can't make out in the label what number this piece is. With the seat off, this is feeling pretty rickety. So I'll get out the spreader clamps and I'll take this apart. I prefer using spreader clamps because it gently removes the parts. Oh yeah, that just came apart. Um, if you use a mallet, you might risk snapping a piece or splintering a piece. So this really is the best way to do it. Okay, well that was easy. So let me get this out of the way. And we'll see if this back wants to come apart. Oh, yep, it's popping apart here. Okay, so this will be easy to take apart. That's a nice change. 
Good. I am finding the odd nail in the joints here, so I need to cut those out of the mortises, and then I can clean up the joints. Now that I've got this one side off, what I can do is work on getting the screw out. If you remember earlier, at the bottom, one rocker was held on with a screw, and this one, it broke off. So the other half is in here, and I need to get that out because I need to put a dowel connection in between this and the new rocker. And what I'm using for that is a plug cutter. And what a plug cutter does is it creates a round plug. But in this case, I'm going to put this around the screw, and I'm going to drill out around the screw so I can pull that screw out. Now, I wouldn't dare put a chisel near this because it's going to ruin the blade. Working right next to metal, it's a recipe for disaster. So, I'm just going to hopefully clear out the wood around the screw so I can grab it and start to twist it. Okay. So I've got that wood cleared out. And hopefully I can grab that and unscrew it. So now that I've got that out, what I can do is glue this chair back together. As I glue up the back, I'm also going to glue up this broken rocker. And you see here, there's a lot of end grain, and end grain to end grain does not glue together and provide structure. So what I'm going to have to do is take out, uh, use a dado or a router bit to clear out a section in here and insert a spline. So a piece of oak. I'll insert into that slot to give me the strength across this broken joint here. Now originally I thought I would replace this whole thing, but looking at the finish on it, um, I really hate to start with something new. So I'm going to give this a try. If for some reason this doesn't work, I'll replace the rocker, but I think it's worth the effort to try and get this um, staying in original form, but still make it strong. This is the bottom of the rocker here, and you can see this large diameter hole was drilled to get the head of that screw in. And what that's done is it's taken out probably 5 eighths of uh, depth here and weakened the structure of the rocker. My plan is not to put a screw in, but to put a dowel in. So the dowel will go from here up into the leg, and that way all of this material down here provides a really good strong structure so the rocker won't break again. These joints are pretty clean but over here I've got some stain that's on here and there's a glossiness which is uh, probably from rubbing back and forth. So I'm just going to use 120 sandpaper and look at that stuff that's coming off there. So I don't want this in the joint to contaminate the glue. that wood as bare as possible for that glue to grab. I'm using liquid hide glue for this project and the reason I'm using hide glue is because it can be reversed. If for some reason a spindle were to break in here, all these glue joints I'm putting together can be undone with heat. 
So it's important when you're working on antiques that you're not using modern glue, the PVA, you're using high glue. And my bottle's just about run out here. So as I show in other videos, it's really important to make sure that you put glue on both sides of the joint. The glue won't work where you don't put it, so it's important that you get it on the joint, all across the joint, and that way you're maximizing the strength of the joint. So good generous coating there. And this stuff just wipes off with water, so no concern about getting it all over the place. I let the glue dry on this overnight, and I did some research in the meantime. I went to the Wellington County Museum and Archives and found out about the John C. Mundell Company that was based on the label in the bottom of the seat. And it turns out this cabinet maker was running this business from 1848 to 1930 when his son finished running the business. So that would make this at a minimum 90 years old. It's likely over 100 years old. So that means this is a restoration project where I'm trying to preserve that history rather than just doing a repair. So it has a bearing on how I reinforce this rocker. As I mentioned before, I could route out a section here, put in a spline, and that would strengthen this joint. But what it's doing is I've now got end grain to end grain, which is an extremely weak joint. So I'm creating weaknesses on either side of that. So that's not the right solution. Another option to preserve the finish that's on either side of this would be to slice off the edges and laminate those on a new piece to give me a strong piece. And then I'd have to finish the top and the bottom to match. Now, uh, when I do thinking, typically thinking overnight uh, gives me other ideas, and I came up with one more. That is to put this on the table saw like this and run a dado across here. And what that'll do is allow me to get really deep here in the center where I've got the split. But it will run out over here, and it will run out over here. So what I can do is put a piece of wood in there, and I won't have any of that end grain weakness and really give me some strength. The other consideration on this is how to glue that in. I can't use wood glue in that because while I can clamp it this way, it would give me a strong joint at the bottom of that dado. It won't give me a strong connection on either side of it because I can't squeeze it. So I'm going to be using epoxy in here. And normally I don't want to use epoxy on an antique, but this isn't a joint. Uh, this is to strengthen the whole body of it and it's going to be at the bottom of the rocker, so you're never going to see this. So my solution is plow a dado in the bottom here, epoxy in a new piece, shape it to fit, and we'll have a nice strong rocker.
I'll just leave this in the jig. It'll make it easier for glue ups. And now what I can do is slide in a piece of oak. And then I'm going to mark it here and I'm going to cut it oversize because I want to shape it exactly to fit. So I'll cut that out in the bandsaw and then we can glue it up. I'm working on three projects right now that all need a little bit of epoxy. This is one of them here. So I'm going to mix this up and then glue up the rocker. Because these pumps mix up so much epoxy, I try to batch things together so I'm not wasting a lot of the adhesive. So this makes up a very thin viscosity glue and I prefer it thicker when I work with stuff. So I use a tip from Tom Johnson. He taught me about this colloidal silica for the West system. And you add some of this in. It's a thickening agent. So now I've got a much thicker consistency. So now it's just a matter of lining the whole inside of this with the glue. And then we're good to go. The glue is now dried so I can take this out of the clamps and shape the spline to match the existing chair. Now the woodworking aspect of repairs is what I really enjoy doing. I started off my woodworking business as a custom woodworking business but found it's very difficult to make money in North America doing custom woodworking. So I've converted my business into furniture repairs and I'm using those skills and talents as a furniture builder in repairing furniture. So let me show you how this is done. First I'll take this out of the clamps. And there you can see the rocker. I'm going to pull up my draw knife and I'll use my flat spoke shave. So the shave horse here, I just push the pedal down and it clamps down, but this allows me to work on both sides of this at once. So what I'm doing is just taking the draw knife working up the rough shape and then what I'll do is refine it with the spoke shave. Now I want this to be a nice smooth curve because that's what you're going to feel when you're rocking in the chair. So I'm just looking to get a nice gentle curve across there and then match it up with the existing edge. Nice and smooth. This is what I'm looking for here. I'm just at the point where I'm taking off finish on the existing wood. So this is nice and smooth. Once I put stain and finish on that, the repair should disappear. The rocker's all set now and ready to go. I'm not going to stain it until I get everything assembled. The next challenge is assembling this. There's a dowel that goes in here, 
but here where the screw was, I want to put in another dowel. This one goes on an angle like this. The screw went on an angle like this. So I'm not sure if I put a dowel in where the screw is that I can actually assemble this chair. So I need to dry fit everything, see how it comes together, and decide how I'm going to join this back part where I no longer have a screw. The way this is coming together here, this dowel is a, on a bit of an angle this way. So in order for me to put this chair together, I need to put together the body of it first and then the rocker goes on last, which means the dowel angle here is going to have to match the dowel angle here. Otherwise, I can't assemble this. So I need to work out this angle and this angle, so I know what angle to drill the dowel in for both the back and for the rocker. Here you can see this tenons on an angle. So what I'm gonna do is line up my ruler to the center of that tenon and then draw a line for reference line. With that reference line, I can now go at roughly 90 degrees and measure the distance. So I'm about here. And then again up here. And now I can draw this line here. So that will give me a parallel dowel to this tenon here. I've marked the center here and then marked it on top and marked the center this way as well. So that's where my drill bit's going to start. And then this is the depth that I want as well. Again, I want a lot of meat down here. I want to protect this rocker to make sure it'll stay intact. So this is as deep as I want to go. Now when I put this in the vise, what I like to do is put this vertical. It just helps in terms of being able to align it as I'm drilling the hole. I set my depth with a piece of tape and then drill the hole. Start with a small drill bit and then work my way up to a larger drill bit. And I'm right near the screw hole that used to be there, so this might be difficult.
And now for the moment of truth. So put that in. Got this clamped up where it's going to be glued. And we'll test the dry fit. Ha ha, success. So we're all ready for glue. The glue is now dried on the rocker so I can unclamp it and work on the final pieces. I've got the seat to go on and I've got some stain and finish to put on the rocker and then we're all ready to go. Now I was able to reconnect with the customer just before this is finished to get more of the story around this rocking chair. And this gentleman's in his mid-60s and he recalls being at his grandparents' cottage sitting in this chair when he was a child. So at that point this chair would have been at least 40 years old. So it's interesting to hear that story of why this means so much to him. Um, he's going to put this in his cottage, so it's going to continue to live the legacy. Now that this chair is repaired, it's probably 100 years old. It's probably going to stick around for another 100 years. This little piece of paper has told quite the story. The only spot I'm touching up the finish is around where I'm putting these buttons back on. And that's simply because I want to disguise the fact that any of this has taken place at all. So I'm just covering up the edges to hide any potential light areas when I get that button back on. And then it's just a matter of putting a little bit of glue inside the hole. Not a whole lot. Don't want to make it difficult for the next person to have to pull this off. And then put the button in. So here's the repaired rocker. Here's the original. You can see here there's no finish on this part where it gets a lot of wear. I'm going to put a coat of stain on there and a coat of shellac. And I'm using a water-based stain. This is Saman. This is a simple stain to apply and has no chemicals. So this is a new technology going on an old piece. Well, I know the customer is going to be really happy with his restoration work. Our videos like this take about 8 to 16 hours to produce. And our Patreons are helping us by contributing on a monthly basis for our video production work. If you'd like to help contribute, you can check the link out below in the video description. Here are all our contributors at the high five level. We do have levels as well at the business level and personal level, where I'll give you one-on-one -on -one video conferencing as a part of that package. If you can give this a thumbs up, it'll help other people find our videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click over here, click on that bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture.